by and large, there's some direct connection between the attempt to create a Marxist utopia and starvation, uh, authoritarianism. And I think I know what this is in actual. No, totally, dude. Yeah, they do it on purpose. They love doing it. Yeah. It so I'm not, to... a, I, I don't even, Has I'm been. not a Marxist. I don't agree with Marxists. Uh, I, I might even fight Marxists. Uh, but so well, let's fight. Let's fight. Uh, but this guy, what's like, up with you, dude? You're trying to fucking fight people? Like, <laughs> just fight You're Joe the Manchin. one who wants the gauntlet. Yeah, but one... fucking Joe Manchin. Like, people that are actually in the seat of power, not like fucking random dickhead Marxist Leninists on the internet. <laughs> but, but or these, Joe Rogan. But these right wingers, when they come in with like, Marxists just want to starve you, why would they want that? Why would they want that? That's so dumb. Well, he's going to describe it to you okay. and fucking wreck you in the marketplace of ideas. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. He's yeah, going to yeah. destroy the you. The question of group selection, which is because these systems are game theoretically unstable. <laughs> just throw shit up against the wall. Uh, they're game theoretically <laughs> unstable. And that's just the theory. A game theory. Like, shut the <laughs> fuck up, dude. What is this? Shit, man. Hashtag Dark Horse, man. This guy's... And then, and then these fucking idiots will, like, watch and go, mm hmm that's actually great. That's brilliant. Mm, thank you. They don't know, have any idea what he's saying. Neither does he. Because they punish mm -hmm. those who do more and reward those who do less in order to get... It's just like, first of all, first of all, this notion that the most productive citizens in society are those who actually own the capital rather than the ones that literally do the productive labor is psychotic and completely fucking diametrically opposed to the reality, okay? Without them, shit doesn't work. I know you're a capitalist, so you of course think like replaceable labor automatically means it's not important or no. as important as no. like fucking no, uh, I don't the, the CEO or whatever the fuck. No. No, it's 50-50. It's, 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 it's a nuanced, complicated thing that's not as simple as uh, labor does all of the work, uh, and it's certainly not as simple as these baboons talking about. Oh, who gives a shit about labor? We don't. Labor literally, that. there's no, there's no value without labor. But yeah, I agree. Okay, then, but, then. You but there's understand. also no uh, value without capital and without management. Wait, so, what? You, yes, the one hundred. What do you mean? There's no. no value eventually, there capital. has to be management. If you have labor, you okay, have to have management. Okay, that doesn't mean. Okay. And you can't having do anything a, Having capital. a bottom-up approach and having like a labor-first approach does not mean that there's no like managerial. Yeah, yeah, they were saying this. There is no management whatsoever, okay? Yeah, you need management. That's okay, why I'm saying well, you need both. You should, Jake is right. You should let him teach you economic theory. Thank you, XQC4. Um, <laughs> okay, let's get, let's, let's hear this shit though. Let's but like, it. as far as the, the value of, uh, like, what I'm talking about is in our heavily financialized economy, what value does the capital owner shareholder, like the majority shareholder, add to the product itself when you uh, especially compare them to the value that the laborer provides? Like John yeah. Deere, right? You got the John Deere striking workers that actually fucking absolutely comstered the management uh, recently. Uh, so shouts out to them. Like you got those guys, okay? You got like 19 year welders and shit that are literally no longer working uh, because they're striking, right? What the value that they create is, is tangible, it's obvious. What value does the shareholder who has never been inside of the fucking factory yeah, even have? Be. Yeah, that's easy. So you don't have to be inside the factory. Everybody's uh, including- okay, but what, what value does the shareholder have? Capital, he's providing capital for the company to do uh, the things that they need to do. They need- So they, they can be resources. substituted is what you're saying. Oh, like, definitely, literally a 100%. Fucking, by, by, That's the whole point of the stock market. By like a, a worker fund. Yeah, a sh shareholders are enormously fungible. In the stock market, they're the most fungible part there is. There's no special thing about a shareholder. They're just a fungible thing that, but you need it, right? So uh, like, Wow. Obviously, you need all of the above. And then the question isn't whether you need any of those. The question is, how do you weigh them, right? So how do they get the capital? Uh-huh. The, the shareholder, how do they get the capital? Well, th there's a ton of different ways to get capital. A lot of it was illicit back in the day, right? And so... We are going to always arrive at 
one guy's grandfather decided we're going to do islands, enclosures US and he was first islands, to do that okay islands, and that's it ultimately islands, there's no other US fucking difference islands, if you if you US go far back islands, enough there's going to be one guy who bopped ways. the head of the other guy and said enclosures we're doing it seems great we should build a system and design it around this idea of private property okay ultimately that's how, that's where it comes from yeah, so look, on the one hand, capital was derived in the uh, in the past and in the present in awful ways. Extraction of oil, which destroys the planet, uh, puts us externalities on the, the rest of us, etc. Right? And you go back to the kings, how the kings get it. They murdered everybody in sight and then declared themselves the king. And then they got all the money and then they passed it down. I get it, right? But at the same time, that doesn't get rid of the need to actually have that money to start up something. And management is useful and has its own use right to me i'm both super biased but i think at the same time it's true there there is a critical part that of capitalism that actually does work and is important which is founders okay so i'm biased because i'm a founder right but but founders are actually do something creative create a company produce it's like being a producer you produce a thing right in this in our case it's shows but it could be cars it could you're be also anything. a key man though so that's your 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 value doesn't come from you being a founder your value comes from the audience that you've cultivated through your own personal labor now that labor is uh obviously uh, uh that labor is a is is also produced by others as well there's other workers underneath you that are helping you create that and generate that and whatnot but ultimately you could do what i'm doing and still be able to reach a level of success because you yourself by working would be able to do that. So that's entirely different than like the guy who's just, uh, who takes all of his money and puts it into the, and parks into the stock market and uh, is just sitting and, and. But I don't value that guy. I don't say like that guy's better than anyone else. No, I that just... guy is not a productive person is what I'm saying. They're not, but, they're but... not a productive laborer and society could perfectly exist without that guy. But someone would still have to fucking clean the toilets and someone would still have to fucking uh, you know, guard the mansions, if that's what you guys want to fucking talk about. Someone would still have to fucking drive the cars, pick up the poop, pick up All the trash. All that is true, but... And, but and also create commodities. But you also need the capital, so it's not like you, that guy is not necessary. He's fungible, but necessary. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that the shareholder is worth more than the labor. Absolutely not, right? But you do need both. No, that's you only need both in a system where where the, the majority of the wealth is in the hands of the few. You would not need that in a system that, uh, where, where you could collectively fund these sorts of enterprises. You absolutely could do that. There are countries that do that as well. There's different kinds of funds that, that um, like the, the labor pool can and join into. You know, in a sense, uh, capitalism is halfway getting us there. It's gonna kill us before it gets us there, okay? It's because the downsides of capitalism are now enormous and and have totally run away right but but what do, how do you survive how do we survive in a lot of ways we crowdfund right we crowd source the uh, our capital right uh, and so is can that is that system possible definitely yeah is it preferable probably right but we haven't fully built it yet we don't have the infrastructure for it yet but we're slowly building it mm -hmm. but that is also mm -hmm. happens through markets we're not we're not slowly building it the reason why we're not slowly building it is the same reason why you look at like FDR is a hero, right? Because you refuse to recognize that external pressures is precisely the reason why FDR operated the way he did. Both no, domestically, both domestically with the trade unionists, communists, like an actual fucking robust communist movement, but also internationally as well. Like seeing the rise of communism and being and wanting to at least enact some sort of welfare state policies and social safety nets to stop that uh, that that revolutionary action dead in its tracks to offer people some crumbs You're a fine and dude. without that which we don't have anymore we have no counterbalance like we have no revolutionary force on this planet uh without any of that we just we, we're not going to magically move towards uh offering more uh more power and even a larger piece of the uh profits uh, back to the workers that this is not going to happen just like without unions and union power we're not going to get there either so it's just a yeah, but that part I don't necessarily disagree with. I don't think it's magic. I think it happens in the way that you're seeing it happen literally in our case, right? 
but at the same time, yeah, external pressure is enormously important. There's no way FDR would have done what he did without that pressure. There's no way LBJ would have done what he did on civil rights without external pressure. And so, you know, if you're talking about the reality of like how that change got done, it's an ugly reality because they were worried about riots. They were worried about physical strikes that got pretty heated, okay, uh, in, in the case of FDR. And in the case of LBJ, it was the riots. And so was there a role for Malcolm X? Yeah. Did it make a difference? Yes. So people don't like to admit that. It's true. Uh, and so I'm not disagreeing with you on that. And, and in a way, you could even argue, as I think you partly are, that FDR was helping to save the current system. Otherwise, he was. was. Yeah. That's what, that's what like, Marxist Leninists uh, that believe uh, in, in, you know, revolutionary action see the welfare state as counterproductive. They think that the welfare state is offering a level of comfort to the workers that sedates them Has and it. helps them think uh, like the SDP did in, uh, you know, in, in Germany, uh, in the pre-Nazi Germany, uh, that they, they feel like they have a seat at the table, they have a crumb of power, and they're seeing like genuine material changes, no matter how fucking tiny it is. So they just uh, no longer want to fight back in, in the ways that truly, uh, in the ways that where you can truly change uh, the way that we organize our society. That's a really legitimate and interesting critique. And, you know, and it depends on what you mean by welfare state. So if you're talking about food stamps, that's even more true. But then how brutal are you going to be in denying that? to try to hope for a revolution, right? Yeah, no, I, I am not an accelerationist anyway. I don't think that we will ever accelerate uh, towards a fucking Marxist-Leninist revolution. The material yeah. conditions are not there. I think that, like, it's an outdated way of thinking. We don't even have any sort of organizational power. And commodity production and the way it's done now, uh, especially in the Western world, when it's so far removed from the assembly, when the labor aristocracy is so far removed from the assembly line, that, like, it's just not going to happen. Our... our our uh, our labor force has been pussified, if you will, uh, and and no longer like is actually fucking working in the factory. So it makes it much 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 more difficult to actually organize because you're working white collar jobs for the most part. Right. But there are things that could lead to structural and institutional change that are part of the quote unquote welfare. Oh, state. also the other part is we. This is actually a brilliant take from Murat, and you'll enjoy this. Murat always talks about the bread price. He says. No matter where you go in America, the price of bread is stable and it's cheap. And he's 100% right. He's like, as long as that bread price is the same and people at the very, like, the people that have the most revolutionary potential are still able to feed Love themselves, this which Americans can, by the way, no matter how poor they are and no matter how much, like, medical bankruptcy exists and whatnot, and no matter how much cruelty an oppression we subject uh, the working class here in America to ultimately as long as they can fucking buy bread and eat bread and bread is an analogy here for food for the most part they will never fucking rise up and, and engage in labor militancy or have any sort of like violent bloody revolution no the Mora theory on bread is excellent uh, and is you'll see it play out in milk a lot uh, where they'll actually have a lot of news stories about the price of milk uh and so and it happened recently too uh but you know like in a sense uh, obama is the political version of that you just do a little release valve right just release the pressure a little bit so you can maintain the over overall brutality of the system while pretending to do a tiny bit of change so yeah and they've done a great job of keeping us at like barely sustaining wages and prices yes just just well fed enough to not recognize that they're starving you but still starved enough that you don't have the power to fight back totally in fact i think that's why the right wing is going towards they're losing not their the minds because they know they're getting fucked with and they're not wrong about that the system is fucking with them it is rigged it is corrupt right but their reaction has been so it must be the lizard people and let's go do weirdo random violence that doesn't have anything to do with anything right 
and then people come in and grifters take advantage of that, right? But what we need is a left-wing alternative that actually gives people a way to constructive way to change the system and rebuild it. But uh, but the right wing is not wrong. The system's fucked. Yeah, um, that's I, that's why I think like the revolutionary potential only exists in the third world. If we're being real, if we're being really real, the only places where there's like actual revolutionary potential is the third world. It's the exploited people because here in the United States, whether we like to admit it to ourselves or not, we still benefit greatly from the extraction of natural resources from the third world. And we benefit greatly from the uh, imperialist conquest of the United States. We reap the benefits of that. Some people openly recognize it. Some people don't. Um, but uh, it, it still lives in the back of our minds whenever we think, well, I'm, I'm happier it. living here in the United States than in fucking, you know, Zimbabwe. And that's what it is. That's ultimately, that's the reality. So uh, there's a lot of truth to that. I like uh, the only thing I saw in the comment section is somebody said uh, something along the lines of I'm a Maratist. Yeah, and and, uh, and I'm I'm down for that. Okay, let's watch the end of this. I still haven't seen Jordan Peterson. People who are harmed by that, that is to say, those who tend to contribute more and are therefore punished by such a system, to adhere to it, you have to threaten them. Right, right? they're unplayable games, right. and you have to enforce. This is such an incredibly simple uh, point of view on like organizing under uh, like a more centralized system or socialism or communism or even a social democracy, if you will. It, it's silly. It's like a childish way to look at this. I don't force them by force because people discover they're unplayable. Right. Yeah. Game theorists are interested in the repeatability of interactions and some forms of interactions degenerate with time. Those aren't sustainable. Like they're not good games. You As you play them, you get bored by them or hurt by them. You don't want to keep playing. Some games maintain themselves. And we have an ethic that teaches us when we're playing a sustainable game. I think that's the voice of conscience. Your main as it's instantiated is actually an unplayable game and you gave a reason you can't set up a system that punishes people that are productive and rewards people who aren't even like rewards people who aren't productive what does that even mean so they're just calling everyone who works unproductive yeah no the entirety of the working class are unproductive which is ironic because it's the exact inverse of that that is true if we are comparing someone who is a uh, a, a, a capital holder, a capital owner, in if we're comparing them to a fucking worker, that person is actually a productive, a part of the productive labor force. No commodities will ever be produced without the worker. No value will ever be created without the worker. That worker might be replaceable, okay? But the entire point of solidarity and the entire point of fucking labor union organizing and the entire point of socialism is to demonstrate that like, uh, we have more to fucking win if we uh, unite side by side and show that like, yeah, we might have a easier barrier of uh, a lower barrier of entry into becoming laborers. But ultimately, if we fucking unite without us, you have nothing. You have no value and you have no fucking productive uh, forces. So it's ridiculous to say the opposite is true, though. But they say it regularly because they suckle on the capitalist teeth. That's how they make money. They make money by saying the system that we are existing under is the best possible organization of the economy. The system that we're existing under is good. And, uh, you know, one day you too can also be Nine rich. Months. You just have to have the alpha brain, rich guy mindset. They're no, they're no different than the fucking Deepak Chopra for white dudes or well, Deepak Chopra is also, uh, you know, uh, hitting the, he also targets white dudes as well, but they're, they're no different than the, the, you know, doing goop for white kids. Okay. So the great irony here is that they're almost all of these guys are funded by right wing Thanks, billionaires, John right? Chat. So they don't actually have to fend for themselves. I think he Crowder is an exception. I think he's actually popular. Etc. Rogan is certainly an exception. Uh, but most of the Dave Rubens, I don't know Jordan Peterson's story in specific, but the Ben Shapiro's, etc. They literally get funded by really Elvis wealthy right, capitalists to do propaganda for them, which then ironically makes them labor. And so they're arguing against themselves because they're fungible. Who cares if it's Dave Rubin or Jordan Peterson or, 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 or whoever else? You could, according to their own argument, you could just flip them out. They're irrelevant. They're puppets, right? So they're making a hilariously ironic argument. Okay.
But the thing is, guys, yeah, obviously... they also have enough uh, material wealth to be able to fucking become capital owners as well. If and you that's why... suck on that teat long enough. Yeah, and yes. they have, dude. And come on. Have, yeah. He's a couple million dollars. Like, he could just very easily fucking shut this operation down and, you know, get addicted to benzos and go live in Russia for a couple of years as his fucking daughter, the true dragon of chaos, almost fucking murders him by uh, trying experimental Probably benzo addiction uh, uh, therapy in Russia because it's not allowed in America because it can fucking kill you if you uh, quit benzos cold turkey. Or even after that, when uh, you're not fucking uh, murdered by the fact that you did this experimental therapy in Russia, then maybe your uh, Dragon of Chaos daughter will give you COVID because she's at a Serbian nightclub with her boyfriend who she got a fucking entire tattoo of, by the way. Sorry, all of those things that I mentioned is real, by the way. Who's, I, I missed whose daughter this is. Mikhail Peterson, Jordan Peterson's sexy ass daughter who's like <laughs> married to some fucking like psychotic Serbian dude. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Almost murdered her, uh, Jordan Peterson like twice. All right, but one more thing. Sexy so as fuck. They, they make this insane argument that labor is fungible. Yes, well, that's there's some l relative truth to that. On the other hand, there's literally nothing more fungible than capital. It's the most replaceable thing in the world. It's just money. So uh, you don't need any one particular person with money. You just need, the, yes, you need capital to start something and to maintain something, but it doesn't have to be from any one person. So their argument against labor can be used against them a thousandfold. Yeah, they, the argument can't be used against labor as long as there's solidarity. They're just benefiting from the fact that there is no solidarity and no class consciousness because of centuries of Red Scare propaganda and the complete destruction of uh, any sort of fucking communist project or socialist project that has ever happened around the planet. So, shouts out to the American State Department for that. Um, shouts out to Stalin for that, too, to some degree. You know, they, uh, yeah, yeah, it just like didn't work out. So let me see the rest of this game through. We're Even if some done. of the people are only miming productivity and they're actually power hungry tyrants, you can't clump them in with the competent people and punish all of them. Yep. Now, and, it, know, and if you try in order to stabilize it, in order to get those who are being punished for contributing not to defect, you have to threaten them. So the authoritarianism follows quickly on the heels as does in many cases the failure of the system to deliver even basic well-being hence yes. starvation well and P piaget pointed out quite explicitly because yeah dude shortages or were never like there's two things here one like uh famine right when we talk about socialism immediately it's like famine uh, uh man-made famine um, whether it's because of like uh, central centralized mismanagement, whether it's because of like idiotic fucking uh, scientists who are the only Stalinist scientists remaining that haven't been fucking gulagged, uh, giving uh, horrifically wrong and idiotic ideas on how to do it, whether it's, uh, you know, there's a multitude of different reasons, uh, or whether it's like stocking uh, for a potential winter. Uh, there are a multitude of different reasons and mismanagement that causes situations like that, except we currently also have artificial shortages, like 14 million people every fucking year die worldwide from famine and famine related diseases. Uh, that happens in an economic organization that is so incredible at commodity production that we have a surplus of food. Like at least the socialist countries that were there was fucking famine. Like they did literally, they they couldn't figure it out. Okay, they mismanaged it, not deliberately starved the populace uh, in an effort to make sure that like their uh, their their bottom line was not, you know, their bottom line was not at uh, was not being attacked. Right. I have my own issues with Marxism as we've talked about, but in terms of their critique. It depends on your cohort, doesn't it? So, like, if you're talking about America, as the Moratists will claim, uh, point out accurately, yes, the pr price of bread is relatively stable, so people aren't going to starve, and that's part of the Simon system that allows us, uh, the capital to subjugate the laborers at a barely survivable wage. But if you're talking about the whole world, which is in effect under capitalism, well, to your point earlier, Haas, they... They're taking from the Southern Hemisphere and often leaving them to starve uh, for the Northern Hemisphere's benefit. So did capitalism really do a better job at ending starvation? No, by definition, it didn't. 
These guys are just saying, no, you don't I don't mind if they starve in Africa no, as long as I'm... You don't okay. understand. When people die of famine under a socialist organization of the economy, then that's the fault of the system. When people die of famine under a capitalist organization of the economy, that's the fault of their bootstraps. They That's could right. not find their bootstraps and they could not pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Or if they found their bootstraps and pulled it, they didn't pull hard enough. Um, let alone man-made famines like uh, in, in Bengal or, uh, or, or currently ongoing fucking famines like in Yemen uh, caused with American weapons by Saudi Arabia. It's just like, it's always the, uh, we always relegate back to the individual and its individual responsibility. So under a capitalist so, economy, it's foolproof. You yeah, can never lose that argument then. A hundred percent, billion percent agree. The biggest famine in the world right now, as far as I know, is Yemen. And, and Yemen is caused by capitalism because uh, the defense contractors needed more money. So they needed a war. Saudi Arabia wanted power, but they couldn't do it without the American defense contractors. So in order for the defense contractors to make an extra couple of billion dollars, they starved the people of Yemen. Yay, capitalism. So uh, both systems have massive issues and, and there needs to be some sort of balance which does not exist. But these guys are jokers. They're not having a real conversation. This is just propaganda uh, that they are ironically laborers for. Yeah, they're, they're, they're engaging in pro-capitalist propaganda, but that's, what's, that's the best thing about being like uh, an easy... That, that's the best thing about being someone like a reactionary talking uh, head is that like you don't really have to do too much you could just say like the system is actually great you can pull the steven pinker and be like uh everyone can go to mcdonald's so obviously things are really good right now has and they, that, that ought to do it <laughs> everyone has an iphone so things are actually better than they've ever been before it's like yeah there's exponential growth of technology no matter which fucking system you exist under uh, you can say that uh, the USSR had no technological achievements going from an agrarian potato farming fucking economy to like one that defeated the United States in the space race. Uh, it, just avoid all of that all you want, but it's still the truth, right? Uh, and that uh, that could exist under socialism, that could exist under capitalism, that will always exist. Um, the reality is uh, making it more uh, of an uh, egalitarian society or uh, one that... Uh, one that doesn't fucking completely rip through the third world. The USSR made a better rifle than the AR-15 back in 1947. That's also true. He was very interested in games as the basis of morality. That a game that you have to punish people to adhere to is going to be outcompeted by a game that people will play by themselves. That's a really interesting take. Is there any form of fucking... Uh... Is there any form of capitalism that is truly, uh, truly compulsory, well, not compulsory, but uh, truly uh, for uh, people doing it at the behest of their own, like they, they just want to do it. Is there any form of remuneration under a capitalist organization of the economy that doesn't happen at the threat of the structural violence of poverty? There's no voluntary, there is no voluntary fucking uh, working under capitalism. Maybe there are in like Jordan Peterson's situation. So it's a great point, Haas. And uh, I, I want you guys. Do you guys want to fucking work uh, at the restaurant? Do you want to fucking uh, clean people's toilets? No. Well, guess what? You're going to fucking die then because you're not going to be able to put food on your table. You're not going to be able to put a fucking roof over your heads and you're going to fucking die. And while you're dying, we're going to subject you to the most dehumanizing conditions in the process of your death while you're living in the fucking street and eating trash, okay, as you further and further uh, uh, fall into the cycle of despair and you fucking use drugs to self-medicate and try to like avoid the reality that you're existing in and, and how hellish it is, even though you're literally living in a zip code where some of the biggest fucking mansions exist and some of the wealthiest people exist. That's what you get if you don't fucking work under a capitalist organization of the economy. In fact, that is almost exactly the point the Squid Games made, Yeah. <laughs> right? So is it really voluntary? Did they actually play Squid Games voluntarily? No, because the system itself was already so brutal that they thought Squid Games was a better option than the capitalism they were living with in, 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 in that case in South Korea. Uh, although Tim Poole would tell you it was a Marxist critique.
or critique of Marxism. Yeah, he even said <laughs> the writer doesn't know that he's critiquing uh, uh, communism. Like, that's... Tim Pool is so fucking stupid. He was like, yeah, uh, I didn't understand the main point of Squid Games. As a matter of fact, actually, even the writer didn't understand. The, the real point of Squid Games is what I think it is, not what the writer intended it to be. No, but look, Tim Pool is a joke, right? He, he just, like, he's a true, like, grifter uh, 101, right? So, like... Yeah, I remember when he was pretending to be left wing. I was, I remember when he was pretending X, Y, and Z. And the, like, you, there's no point in having an intellectual debate or argument with Tim Pool. His whole thing is get on camera and go, uh, poor white people. Uh, it's minorities' fault for everything, right? Wow, that's tough to do. And of course, that'll get you, you know, a decent sized audience on yeah. YouTube. People want to be victimized. Yeah. People want to feel like they're being made a victim. And there is a very real way that they are being victimized. But it's not the way that fucking all these reactionaries tell you you're being victimized. You're not being victimized because you're white. You're being victimized because you're a worker. Okay? It, he's, uh, you're agreeing with that. Oh, I totally agree. Capitalist with that. Andy over here. Yeah. Okay, I got to pee. Uh, also, you're being victimized by the top of the hour ad break chat. That's right. 